Hi, my name's Steve, and um, I am actually the Specky Techie. <coughs> Welcome! Another one of the videos where I'm actually visible, where you can see the voice, the person behind the voice, that's it. Right, um, I'm actually going to show you something that not a lot of people actually show you how to do on YouTube, from what I can gather. I'm going to show you how to get this Core i5 processor which is currently running at 3.7 I'm going to knock that to 4.7 4.7 gigahertz I'm going to overclock that to 4.7 gigahertz so let's see how it goes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply shut down the computer um, once it's shut down it shouldn't take long it's on an SSD <coughs> I'm going to reboot go into the BIOS which is the settings where everything is stored on the computer so as you can see my computer is switched off nothing on at all so you want to power it on like normal and you want to push the delete button or F2 I tend to do both because depending on the BIOS it could be either and pushing both doesn't do no damage so this is taking me into my UEIF no, UEFI BIOS. Now, to, s to stop things getting muddled up, I call it the UEFI BIOS. So, we're now in the UEFI BIOS by Asus. It's a very straightforward way of working with the computer. What we're going to need to do is we're going to make sure you have a K series processor. It would be best if you had the i5-3570K, that is the top of the range i5 processor and it retails at about £160. So you go, want to go to AI Tweaker and as you can see already I've got this slightly overclocked 105.0 on the front side bus. That there knocks the RAM up to just under 1400 MHz from th 1333 and brings my target CPU turbo mode speed to 3990. Now this is all new to me, I've not managed to learn much about this but what I have learned is CPU power management and you want to knock that up to 47. Once you've done that hit enter, you want to disable that. Apparently that interferes with many things that shouldn't be interfered with. Now <clears throat> that's all right. So what this is going to do is knock it to three point, no, four point nine, and we don't want that because that might not run as stable as once four. So you want to bring that back to one hundred and hit enter. So that's going to bring it at dead four seven hundred megahertz and the RAM down to thirteen thirty three. Now to get the RAM up, we go to DDR three and knock that fourteen hundred. So that's <clears throat> that's now going to run a lot better off so once you've got that set up and also might I suggest you use a really really high performance cooler because when you overclock at this sort of levels you cannot rely on the simple Intel cooler that they give you a standard because it just it, you'll fry your processor there's no other way about it um, so if just under here you'll find my cooler which is Cooler Master Evo 610 or something I'm not exactly sure which one it is um, obviously the fan is rotating a lot faster than it looks it's just because two fans there you go um, so I've got plenty of cooling in here I've got all my cooling solutions um, as well as a pretty light that is most important the light must be in there because it looks cool no I'm just kidding um, so I'll just slip that back on there um, <clears throat> so once you've done that now with this motherboard it sets the voltage automatically now I haven't actually um, I haven't actually tweaked with the voltage much so if I put to manual 1.5 volt CPU voltage 
Now, we're going to try it on this. Now, I'm not sure whether that's going to do it or not. So, that's in the amber mode. Um, uh, right, I'm going to go offset mode. Right which puts it automatic we're going to go into windows see what the voltage is and then we're going to lower it a little bit from what's in windows now the asus motherboard oh just a quick notice the computer will shut down don't worry you haven't fried anything it's got to shut down so the bios can reprogram its settings and set the cpu up and the voltage um so we're now going to be in the windows as you can see it's started up the processor is now actually overclocked 4.7 so it shouldn't take too long to get into Windows um, <clears throat> for some reason I've got to wait a moment for the mouse to come on it's a bit weird like that and my external hard drive keeps popping up now got all these prime files prime files prime files core temp local files etc etc delete all them because it clogs up and it's annoying now if we go to core temp um, there we go if you look there 4 700 megahertz so that there is the important number that is overclocked so we're at 1.2360 so we're going to knock it down to 1.22 so we need to restart again and we need to go into the BIOS and put it at 1.22. I better remember that. 1.22. Because if you knock the voltage down a little bit, it's going to reduce the heat and it also could reduce problems with the processor in the future. The main problem that occurs when overclocking is with the voltage. When you put the voltage up, it decreases. Um, it decreases the life of the processor. <coughs> so if we go down to CPU voltage 1.232, so we're going to 1.220, two, two, zero. Two, two, zero. Two, so that's 222. That's a reduction. F10, enter. Let's see if this works. It'll either work or it won't. <clears throat> so it's now booting up. Um, shouldn't take too long. So as you notice, it's frozen. Now that could be a number of reasons why it's frozen. And the reason, one of the reasons is not that the processor is fried. This is not your processor being fried. So don't worry. What this is, is the, uh, computer, the um, voltage isn't powerful enough to get in the windows. So if we put that manually back to where it was... So if we go back to advanced mode, AI tweaker, CPU voltage, 1.230, so we'll try that. So it's a little less, whoops, didn't want to click on that. In fact, we'll pull it off set mode because it worked. Um, <coughs> keep it simple. So let's see a bit of boot now. It should do because it's the exact same settings before. And if it doesn't boot, I'll be panicking because it's a very expensive processor. I don't remember starting that. Right, anyway, just stress test. 
This is the most important thing you want to do when you overclock, is you want to run this for as long as you can to prove that your system is stable. What this does is this runs the CPU flat out to make sure that it is stable at the overclock. Now, as you can see, 100% load, all there, and the temperatures are creeping up a bit. <clears throat> I would say anything under about 85 degrees is acceptable. If it hits 90, you want to start clocking it down a bit. So, you want to keep an eye on them. You want to give it about five minutes of, um, well, of warming up, as I call it. Um, as you can see, it's literally just under 4.7, 4.69996. Um, so it's already on the 84 degrees mark as it is a huge overclock this so you will expect high temperatures from a 4.7 overclock <clears throat> and close that So as you see the 85 went to 86 and flashed yellow, that is a warning. And they are fluctuating quite a bit. So I would call that acceptable because you're never going to be running a Core i5 CPU flat out unless you're just mad. Um, so I would call that under the acceptable mark and call it a day. Now you can choose to leave it at this overclock, I'm not going to because as I said it's an expensive CPU and an overclock like this degrades it over time. But that is a point that these processors are very overclockable and with the right cooling solution you can hit over the 5 GHz mark as a friend of mine has proven before with the 2500K. Now the 2500K is different, maybe a different processor to the 3570K. They're actually not. They're um, they're not that different. They're um, basically the 3570K is a revision. Um, oh, I missed that. I missed my mark to go into the BIOS to turn that off. Oh, I'm gonna have to wait ages now. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a revision basically, and they've shrunk the uh, they've shrunk it down to 22 nanometers, which is another advantage. I don't know. I haven't researched enough to know what sort of advantage that is. All I do know is that as a result of this tweak, they do tend to run hotter. So. Let's go back into the advanced mode and to set it back, I'm going to not set it back to its default clock. Computer power manage, I'm going to put it at 4.1. Yeah, 4.2, I'll be naughty. 4.2, and uh, yeah, I'll enable that because it's not a serious overclock, it'll buff out. Um, <clears throat> Turn. There we go. So I'm going to save that. Go back in the windows. Overclocking is fun, but can be an expensive hobby when things do go wrong. So do your research first. Make sure all your hardware is compatible, and above all, make sure you have a really, really good cooler. Now, the highest I got on an overclock on standard cooling with this processor was 4.1 gigahertz. Um, which in my books is impressive because the AMDs you need a massive cooler to even get anywhere near that. So that's all for that and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helped you out with whatever overclocking problems you may have had or if you just wanted to know sort of how it's done. Now the motherboard BIOS that is, the motherboard that it's on is an Asus P8Z77. Now all the Asus motherboards 
which if you're a gamer you should really get or an overclocker you really want one of them because they're the best um, they all have a similar BIOS and it is straightforward now I have the um, P8Z77i Deluxe which I will show you the box for it's tiny the motherboard is absolutely tiny it's one of the smallest standard um, standardized motherboard sizes you can find it's small because it had to fit in this so now you know how to overclock and I hope this has been a help to you and I hope you enjoy the video cheers for watching